Okay, guys. You guys go ahead. Yeah, so, um, you know, the guy, the only guy that, you know, we're, uh, you know, that's, that hasn't been on the injury, Demarcus Robinson will be limited. He had his groin a little bit, like I told you guys the other day. And then we'll get uh, Laryl Murchison and Darius Williams back out there as well. Coach, when you look at Tutu what is he doing differently this season as opposed last year? You know, really not much. I mean, he's he's improved. I think he's taken advantage of his opportunities. Um, he's done a good job of, of being able to, you know, Make, it, make the most of the chances that he's had when he's been targeted, whether that be on some of the early downs or even third downs, but I've been pleased with Tutu the last couple weeks. I know injuries are part of Logan Russ being one of the world he's currently in, obviously, but um, where have you seen the most growth from him between the spring and now to trust in our role? I think just, just putting the work in. You know, it, it's, it's because he's been consistent. I think he's taken coaching really well from Ryan Wendell and from Zach Cromer. And he's just, you know, I think the work works. And, and you can see a guy that has had a bunch of different experiences, but practiced hard, you know, got a bunch of experience in the preseason that I thought he, you know, was able to improve on. And then when he's gotten his opportunity over the last couple of weeks, he's done well. Sorry, Sean, did you say Darius and Laurel will be out there today? They will be, practice. yes, yes. What, what would you have to see to make them active, you know, for Sunday? You know, I, I think it's really, you know, just – them looking like themselves and um, you know being able to just go cut it loose and um, play the way that you need to be able to play when you're playing in a, a real full speed game and so um, until you get out there in some of these practice settings you know what they've done with Reggie and his group uh, that can sometimes simulate it but there's nothing quite like getting out here on the grass in these competitive settings and so um, that's what we'll be looking for and we're hopeful that that'll be the case and, and they'll be uh, you know helping us this week. In, in terms of interceptions those kinds of turnovers have you seen that you guys had opportunities? Have you not had opportunities? And what do you think has to happen to get, you know? That yeah, I mean, you got to be able to. You got to get into some of those situations where you know you're you're earning those opportunities to be able to rush. Um, you know, there was a couple of them the other day, but um, you look at it. I, I mean, it's they're all different stories. I mean, you look at the one that you know JJ made against Detroit. It was an excellent job. You know, being able to play visual flashback. Um, great instincts and then great ability to be able to finish. And so it takes a lot. Um, I mean, you see, you know, you look at on the flip side, Green Bay's done a great job taking the ball away. You know, Xavier McKinney's a guy that seems like he's always in the right spot. Um, but we always talk about rushing coverage going hand in hand. And, um, you know, to be able to get those turnovers, you know, they've got to occur on pass downs. You've got to be able to earn the right to get into more of those regulated pass down situations where those things can occur. And, um, you know, sometimes we've done that and then oftentimes we haven't. When you said look at a, a guy like Omar Spades or a Jake Hummel, and they flashed, uh, and, and you guys were really optimistic about them in the preseason. They were playing a lot of games mm -hmm. at that time. Sure. You get into this setting where you're game planning and scout team, and they're not necessarily getting those live reps. How do you keep developing young players that you're excited about like that, and, and what does it take for those guys like that anywhere to, to earn an opportunity? Well, I think, you know, you, those guys do get reps in these settings, and, you know, the preseason is – somewhat similar but very different than the regular season in terms of the things that we're asking the types of schemes that that are being seen from the opposing offenses and so um, you continue to give those guys opportunities throughout the course of these practices and if it got to a point where we felt like that was you know the best option for us then those guys would be out there uh, no when they're coming off a game where it's a, uh, efficiency is kind of a question do you work more on those situations you know, you do, but you can't let the other stuff fall by the wayside, Adam. And, you know, when, we, when you look at going one for four, you know, there's, there's so many things. And we kind of talked about that. Jordan asked about that earlier. We, we talked about it. And, you know, I could go on uh, a very long-winded answer. But ultimately, it, it boils down to decision-making and execution. You know, and it, it starts with, all right, are we putting the players in positions to be able to have success? And then with those opportunities or those decisions that we're making, is there an opportunity to execute at a consistent level? And I think... Um, when those two things are aligned, a lot of good things happen. And unfortunately, that wasn't the case the other day. And so it cost us. Um, and really, it, it hasn't been just that game. You know, there, we've been in the red area a lot, um, but there's a lot of different reasons. And, you know, sometimes it's the run, sometimes it's the execution of the pass, sometimes it's recognizing, a, you know, a blitz and where's our quick element throw. And so um, the field shortens everything. The margin for error gets that much smaller. And so... Um, ultimately, all that being said, we have to do a better job, and that will be a big point of emphasis 
Uh, but figuring out the right spots, you know, that's something that we get to a little bit later in the week, but that will be something that we'll have an added emphasis on because it's cost us so far this year. Sean, you were about, uh, earlier this week, you were asked about last year's team problem solving and that, you said, work works. You, you learned that early about that group. Yeah. Um, are you getting that from this group? You, I know you said it's a different team. Yeah. Well, it, it, we are, and, you know, and I think in a lot of instances, you know, that accumulation of guys working through the off season and into training camp, you know, there was a build. We haven't had the luxury of that with this group, you know, and so I think continuing to show what does it really look like, you know, are we getting that rapport that was established where there was a consistency and a continuity really from the start to finish, really with the exception of Cooper from an offense and then defensively it was pretty consistent throughout. And so that matters. What I am seeing are over the last couple of weeks, there's been some bright spots. Um, and really, that has really only represented the first couple weeks that we've had a chance to work with the same group. And so you're learning as a coach. Uh, we're continuing to try to identify those things. And you want to see, you know, the uphill trajectory, you know, go uphill, if you will, during the season. But um, I don't think it's exactly the same. You can draw some parallels. Um, but ultimately, the guys are working and they're doing they're doing a great job of everything that we ask. And I think sometimes we maybe can take for granted, do they really understand exactly what we're looking for and are we painting that clarity to then go execute? And those are the things that, you know, we've got to do collectively together a better job of. Sean, you've talked a lot about this red zone execution. Do you feel in the meetings now but with this, you're almost, for lack of a better word, a sports psychologist, making sure these guys understand what's at stake? Is that accurate? You know, I think what it is is, you know, whether it's, you know, faster starts, it all boils down to, you know, energy edge and, and execution. And, and the enemy has a say in that, but that's not exclusive to the red zone. There's points that are at a premium, but there was other instances, you know, if you just want to talk from an offensive perspective where, you know, we had chances not exclusive to the red zone to do what we're supposed to do and, and big plays will probably be had. But uh, you give Chicago credit, you know, you give the defenses that we're going against credit, but I think what we're looking for is, you know, good quality football, you know, really from the first, first quarter to the fourth in all different situations. Certain ones um, have a little bit more at stake, but, but we're looking for consistent execution throughout the course of the game and really all situations, but particularly the red area. Because, because, yeah. because Green Bay is such a prolific offense as well, when you play a team like that, does game planning also include ball control thinking you yeah you have a way that you know I think a lot of it is all right what's the flow of the game how does it really unfold you go into it with a certain way that you want to try to be able to you know execute and play complementary football on all three levels you know in all three phases excuse me and so um, that's a part of it going into every single game and based on what we feel like those matchups are but you also have to organically be able to adjust and adapt based on all right this is maybe what we anticipate but this is how it's actually unfolded and so those are always things that we talk about, you know, from the beginning of the week, you know, leading up into kickoff. Sean, oh, he played like Cooper Cup. Does he turn into like an extension of the staff? Like, can he help players? And I mean, obviously, you want him out there playing. Sure. But while he's not playing, can he help you guys? And that oh yeah, he, and he's always been that. You know, whether he's out there, whether he isn't, he is an extension of the coaching staff. He's always providing little tidbits of information and I think sometimes that player's perspective is something that can be so beneficial because those are the guys that know and understand the intricacies of you know their experiences and I think it resonates really you know with a lot of those guys. Yeah I think playing with the techniques you know the penalties in particular you know you're talking about illegal contact and some of the you know the you know the PIs those those are the things that we need to be able to avoid those are the things that have extended drives and some of which we've gotten clarity from the league and then other ones you're saying, all right, that, that's very clear. You know, we're, we're past five, we're making contact, we're grabbing outside of our frame as opposed to staying connected to a player, um, especially when they get in and out of phase in some of their route transitions. Um, but it's really playing with the techniques and the fundamentals that are in alignment with, you know, being able to play competitive football but, but not give a flag that extends drives that can be really costly. Okay? Thanks, guys. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I don't know what our count was last week. Um, I feel like, you know, some teams go 16-yard pass and 12-yard run. Other teams go 20-yard pass and 12-yard run, whatever it is. But I feel like we had a few, quite a few of those. Um, Tutu had a couple. D-Rob had one or two. Had one off of a penalty. Um, so, yeah, the last couple weeks I feel like we've had a decent amount of them. Um, you know, we just got to convert those into points. What, 
what makes it so tough, not just for you guys, but you have been struggling with, with that as you talk about scoring touchdowns in the red zone, but why does it get so tough down there? Well, I mean, you know, there's less there's less grass to defend technically for a defense. So uh, if you want to get granular with it, I feel like, you know, windows become smaller. Post safety who caps off on a run in the field at 9 or 10 yards is now capping off at 4 yards. You know, it's harder to run the football, harder to throw the football, all those kind of things. So, um, you know, there's definitely, uh, you know, some things that make it a little bit tougher. But if you execute well down there, you can, uh, you know, usually find your way into it. We just haven't done a good enough job of that the last couple of weeks. And what would be... What do you think has to happen? Is it a combination of things, or what do you think has to happen for you guys too? Yeah, I think, you know, individually as players and as a collectively as a group, like I said, we just need to execute the plays that are called a little bit better. And um, you go back and look at the tape, and there's opportunities um, to either get ourselves in more favorable positions on third down than the red zone or put the ball in the end zone um, with some things that we can do, uh, you know, just as players, uh, execution, fundamentals, technique, all those kind of things. That's what it boils down to with those um, you know, in those parts of the field, it's a lot of that. And then, you know, if if they cover us and, and I can extend the play and then we can get out and try to find somebody or do those kind of things, those uh, usually relate or result in good plays as well. And that's only for game sample size, but are you noticing any tendencies about the way defenses are playing you down there? Obviously, everything is condensed. No, everybody kind of has their own flavor, you know. Um, certain teams like to do their own, you know, one thing. Other teams like to do other things. Um, you know, so I uh, there's not really a, a tendency down there, I think. How much confidence do you have in, in Jordan Whittington, and how do you kind of build that rapport with, with the rookie who's kind of been thrust into? Uh... I have a lot of confidence in all the guys that we have. He's obviously done a really nice job, um, you know, stepping in with his opportunities, done a really nice job catching and running the last couple of weeks, um, turned a, you know, a shallow route, um, you know, into, into 15 or 16 yards into one of those explosives really last week, which was really cool. Uh, I was happy for him. Um, but, you know, you go out there and earn it. You know, you earn those opportunities, you earn the trust, you earn all that. And, uh, you know, he's come in with the right attitude uh, since day one, and it's, you know, it's showing. Have you seen a new D.C. Uh, again, four games sample size, but what have you seen so far from their, from their defense? They do a nice job. You know, they mix it up. Um, you know, I think uh, they're really talented. You know, they're talented on the front. They roll their front, um, you know, a decent amount. So those guys are really fresh when they come in. They play hard. They're really talented on the second level. And then I think they're back end. Um, you know, is one of the best, if not the best, we've played this year. Um, both safeties are playing at a really high clip. Um, both corners on the outside and, and really the nickel as well is playing playing really good football. So it's going to be a, a huge challenge for us. Just to expand on the trust, it seems like Tutu has gained even more of your trust. Would that be accurate? Well, you know, I've had some experience with him. You know, he's been around for a couple of years. Um, he's a smart football player, played quarterback in high school, sees the game kind of through a quarterback lens, which is nice when you talk to him. Um, he can understand some of the things that uh, we're trying to get done. Um, and then obviously he has physical tools. You know, he can run, he, he catches the ball away from his body for a guy that is, you know, not the biggest guy in the world, uh, catches it away from his body really well and does some nice stuff at the second level of defenses. So, um, you know, I think the more reps you get with everybody, the, the more trust and familiarity you get. But he has really done a nice job with his opportunities as well. In your career, when you're playing against another team that has a very prolific offense, mm -hmm. I would assume you're just thinking about what you need to do to execute. Do you think in that process, we got to keep scoring, we got to keep scoring because they're going to have to score? Yeah, you know, I think uh, no matter what game I'm playing against, whoever we're playing against, I'm trying to, every time we touch the ball, I'm trying to come away with points. Uh, touchdowns more than field goals as much as we possibly can. Um, you know, I think my attitude doesn't change uh, week in and week out based on that. Obviously, I understand the challenge that our defense has going against Jordan and, and that offense and what they've been able to do um, the last couple of years, which has been really impressive. So. Um, you got to play each game and each play is its own, but uh, um, you know it doesn't matter who we're trotting out against, man. I'm trying to uh, trying to score a bunch of points. What lessons from the way the team responded to last year's defensive start do you think are going to happen to the team this now? Well, you know, I think it's it's difficult to compare a little bit. You know, I mean, it's a new football team that we have this year. Um, you know, obviously understanding that it's a long season, you got to you got to earn everything you get. Um, you know, to this point, we haven't uh, we haven't earned enough victories for our liking, and and uh, it's on us. You know, us as players, coaches, everybody involved to go out there and and uh, you know figure out ways to get those those Ws. And and um, you know, there's obviously uh, you know a lot at stake in the NFL season. You just got to go out there and continue to play. Um, I don't know. I feel like I've had buys all over the place over my years. I don't. I just know it's coming at some point. Um, 
but uh, no, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel super early to me. I know it probably is in the grand scheme of things, but uh, we got that a couple Thursday games too that are kind of like mini buys. So um, I'm not thinking about that too much to be honest with you. Uh, there, there better not be any more motivation one week or the other. You know, uh, I feel like for the most part, uh, you know, people understand that in this business, it's it's time to go no matter what uh, your record is. If we were sitting here at four and zero, I surely wouldn't be going. Well, it doesn't really matter this week. Um, you know, so uh, you know, we're we're professional athletes. We're uh, you know guys that uh, understand the importance of each game. We do everything we possibly can. Um, you know, Monday to Saturday to get ourselves ready to go win those games. So. I know it's uh, you know it's frustrating for us when it doesn't happen because there is a whole lot of work and effort that goes into it. Uh, week in and week out depends, right? Depends on what the defense likes to do, what they want to. You know what kind of defenses they want to play. Whether it's a hey, here's a heavy can, you know, change change the play week, or it's one of those where it's hey, they're going to roll the roll the decks, a bunch of stuff, and, and you never really know, so you just kind of go out there and play. So uh, it's kind of hard to expand on, to be honest with you, without spending the next 30 minutes, which I need to get ready for practice, so I don't have that. But uh, it is uh, it, it depends week to week. You know, there's times where um, you know there's a lot of things that can be uh, you know up in the air, and then other times it's a little bit more straightforward. Yes, yes. Cool. Thanks, guys.